from John 15, 14 to 16. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall no longer call you servants because a servant does not know the master's business. I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learnt from my Father. You did not choose me. No, I chose you. And I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you anything you ask him in my name. Gospel of the Lord. The word of the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus tells us in that very short reading that we are no longer walking with him as strangers, but as friends, in fact, as his children. Uh, 1 John 3, 1 to 3. We are children of God, and that is what we are. But he's also called us to do something in our relationship with him, and that is to bear fruit. And we, the only way we can bear fruit is to grow. We've got to have growth. And, and I'm thinking, this is now the, the third uh, anniversary uh, celebration that I've, I, I've attended here with you, with this community of grace. Uh, and uh, I was thinking about the growth that has taken place in the th three or four years that I've been here. In fact, this should be my flourishing year, but because it's coming up to the fourth year, but I'm still waiting for something to happen. And it's just that is what I want to speak about. The four years, it says in uh, Daniel 12, 12, takes... Um, f um, he speaks of how many days it will take to, uh, to come to the, uh, the knowledge of what God wants for each of us. Blessed is he who perseveres and attains a thousand and three hundred and thirty-five days, but you go away and rest. It, it takes time to grow, to bear fruit, and we have to be incredibly patient with the Lord. The Lord makes us patient as we, we, we walk with him, we grow with him. It says in Mark 4, 26, when, it, when a seed is planted, he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the land night and day. While he sleeps, when he is awake, the seed is sprouting and growing, how he does not know. Of its own accord, the land produces first the shoot, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear, and when the crop is ready, at once he starts to reap because the harvest has come. So there are a number of stages there, if you like, you can allocate to those four years there's the moment of the seed uh, being placed in, into the, planted into the land, and then the shoot arrives, then the ear, and then in the third or fourth year, the full grain until, in the ear until we get the, the harvest, the fruit, in other words. And I've been trying to examine uh, at least these four years how, how, these, how this process has been taking place. I just want to share with you a little bit about the spiritual nature of all this. You're often hearing in, in the talks given in the Community of Grace a very strong theme of humility. Why? Because it's through humility that we're going to find that growth. The more stubborn you are, like me, the harder 
it is to grasp what this humility is and then to let go of oneself and start growing and allow God to touch, to shape, to, 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 to uh, shape you and to mold you and to put you in his way to grow, in what he's way. He's the one who's the artist. It says in Ephesians, um, we are a work of art. Ephesians, is it Ephesians or is it? Sorry. Ephesians 2, I think. 2.10, yes. We are God's work of art created in Jesus Christ Jesus for the good works which God has already designated to make up our way of life. We are a work in process. And that, that experience of being a work in process is actually at the very beginning of the spiritual journey very hard very difficult to, to stay with it and to, to be convinced that something is happening inside. But it's only through humility, the more we discover humility and the depth of hu the, 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 the boundaries of humility, that's when we, we realize uh, the, this four-year process taking place, this growth taking place. So God has got to the first, first phase to knock out all our self, in a, in a sense, all what we, we our self-knowledge, our knowledge of what we thought we understood ourselves and life. And he's got to pour in his knowledge of what he wants us to know. And that, I think, is hard the older you get, I think. Um, and that's perhaps why I'm, I'm struggling so much to... to I remember Brother Billy telling me, you've got to forget all the books you've read, and uh, you've got to start clean and, and read no more of those novels and other things that I used to read. And I, and I was thinking, that this, is, this is impossible. But the more you, you humble yourself and you just allow, as, as, as Brother Abby said in the first reading, that blind faith to come and, and, and work on you, you, you then experience something of the change. And that's what we're looking for in these four years of growth. God is changing us. They say that true evidence of life is growth, and growth comes from the change. And change is difficult. Change, uh, to change what we thought we were really good at what we really thought we were uh, in, in, our, in our stability as, as human beings. When we ask to change that stability and, 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 and be uh, invited to, 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 to enter into God's stability, not what the world makes us feel stable with, in other words, but what God makes us stable with, that, that is the, one of the hardest things, at least, I found in this, in this uh, journey. So the four years um, means a lot of change, a lot of radical change in, in, in the way we, we see ourselves even, and, and our thinking in particular, our thoughts. Our thoughts have to be in other words, I did not really understand that how, how far we have to be purified. When I say purified, not just simply in the heart, but also in our thoughts, in our way of thinking, our minds. Paul says, you have to put on a new mind, the mind of Christ. That doesn't happen overnight, it doesn't happen over one year or two years or three years, but maybe after the fourth year it, it will come, that uh, we will slowly understand it's not us. It says in 1 uh, Corinthians 2, uh, is it 16, 15, that we have to put on the new mind 
of Christ. And that that mind is what we're aiming for. That's where the growth is. is uh, we, we will notice the growth in the way we, we, we no longer think in the old way. The old way about ourselves, the old way about our relationship with God even. Even that would have grown and changed. Not as it was, as St. Paul says, when you were a child you used to think like a child, but now that you have grown in Christ, it's, you're no longer like a child. But you think in an adult way, but at least in the way God has shaped you to think. So, it's a, it's a big change that needs to take place. And I didn't realize at the beginning of this journey how, how great a change uh, was necessary. Like everybody here, we all think we're okay, we're, we're good, we, we, we've gone so far, we think we've matured. But I can tell you, there's a lot more to come. And, uh, and sometimes that, that change, it, 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 it goes in, in short spells, and then there seems to be nothing happening. And then another spell takes place of growth. Just like the plant, just like the shoot in that, in that, uh, that gospel we heard with Mark 26. The, the, the shoot it takes time in the earth. You can't see anything happening. We're all looking for those visible signs, but nothing seems to be happening. But only after it seems the third year, fourth year, we begin to see the signs, evidence of that growth, spiritual growth. And so I feel that although I'm not, I'm, I'm not, this is, Brother, Brother Victor's anniversary day, I, I don't feel I'm a, I feel I'm a, I'm a kind of a second-hand disciple, or two, uh, two generations removed, uh, because of the, like, like the, uh, the fathers of the church. The fathers learned from the, 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 the apostles themselves, and the apostles learned from Jesus. So I feel as if I'm in that, uh, the fathers of the church stage, learning from the apostles, from the disciples of Brother Victor. And uh, I just wanted to share a little bit about how it, you have to stick with it. You have to persevere and know that there are changes to be made in, within oneself over these four years. And often that change, uh, it comes very surprisingly. Uh, uh, but only when we truly become, get that humility. And it's, it's a bit uh, silly of me, arrogant of me to say that I'm humble. I'm not humble, but you have to keep striving every day uh, for that humility and asking that humility, because that's the key to the growth. Um, and, the, and freedom, for that matter, as well. And knowing over these these two, three years that have been here, four years, I've understood that there are other levels of freedom within a human being that uh, we have yet to discover. And only the Holy Spirit will lead us to that point, those points. And we have to just walk, walk faithfully, humbly, and and persevere knowing that God is always right and I'm not always right but allowing his his way to come into us more and more so let's pray let's ask that uh, we may be people who persevere we've started this race St. Paul often talks about the race to, to finish. We've started it, and I don't know what stage you're at, but you should persevere and allow the Lord to do the work on you. That's what grace does. Grace works in a, in a, in a way silently, invisibly. It's happening in us. And the more we are free, freed of ourselves, we're able to um, allow God to lead us. We have to continue to grow. That's the important part. Grow in the, in the knowledge and the, the grace, as St. Peter says in 2 Peter 3, 
uh, 18, grow in the knowledge. St. Paul says in many places, uh, in Ephesians 3, um, 16, 15, 16, 17, grow, grow in that knowledge of Jesus Christ, grow in the grace. And without it, without grace, we are not going to go anywhere. So, what a wonderful time, what a wonderful thing that God has allowed us, blessed us to become part of a community of grace. One of the most beautiful things I heard just this morning after Mass, one of the parishioners here came and said, your group, I can see, really they are people filled with grace. That's a stranger who doesn't know us. And that's so nice to hear what others can see in you. So continue, grow in the peace and the grace of Christ. Praise the Lord.